Okay, everyone, welcome back again to the studio. And so today we're going to do that second part of, of the intro to charcoal, which is trying to get a little bit freer uh, with the charcoal. And so this is, how do I say it? I don't want to actually put you off before we get started on the class, but it, this today's class might be a bit of an exercise in frustration. <laughs> Let me just put it out there because we're going to go very quickly through a technique that allows you to get looser, uh, you know, and, and sort of view your reference material or your objects with an eye to how you could do a loose drawing. So this is sort of going to be very quickly going through all those steps of how to make that happen. And then we're going to do a couple of additional exercises, exercises at the end that will rely on, uh, you know, some memory and imagination along with what we've done. So we'll be moving at a good clip. We'll be making a mess. I guarantee things are going to go wrong because uh, one of the problems that always happens with charcoal is uh, you end up putting a lot of charcoal down and then it's hard to erase and erasing is part of the process we'll be using today. But I think it's so important just to dive in and do it, try it, make a mess, see how it works. And then the next time you do it, you can still do a loose drawing or whatever, but you have an understanding, you know, where to pull back and where, where not to. I think part of the problem is when we start to draw, we'd like to do something a bit looser. We have a tendency not to know when, when that looseness happens. How, how do we even start doing that? And so we go to our usual methods. And by the time we're halfway through, we're, we're doing another detailed drawing. So this is going to be uh, a chance just to try not doing that and hopefully come up with something relatively recognizable. So let's get started. Don't you just love it when I do this to you? <laughs> okay. Okay. Oh, yay! <laughs> <laughs> All right. yeah. Class number nine. So welcome back to another summer of drawing. I'm so glad you guys are here today for this. So this is class number nine. We've got 10 more classes to go after this. So, uh, you know, lots to learn. Um, we're racing through these techniques, I know, but hopefully the... Uh, They'll, hopefully they'll build your confidence to try new things as we move along. Um, next week, we'll be back to toned paper, but today it's going to be charcoal. And once again, we're on the theme of home and today's theme, uh, today's uh, image will be about accumulation. So with the concept of home, you know, we accumulate objects around the home. And as you know, I, I live with a boat builder. And so we have a lot of tools and that sort of thing. Um, and a, the definition, of course, of accumulation is a mass or quantity of something that has been gra gradually gathered or been acquired. So whether it's your kitchen uh, junk drawer or uh, some other sort of accumulation you have, you know, even when we go camping or, or do something of that nature, we have a tendency to gather objects. It's a very human thing to do. So I decided this would be an interesting image to use because it is so busy that it's a bit overwhelming, but that gives us an opportunity to get a little loose with how we interpret it. We can see a few objects really clearly, and most of us can identify at least a few of the things in this drawer, but much of it is obscured. And it doesn't actually really matter from a drawing point of view, whether we can see the detail or not. So when we're working again with, uh, you know, charcoal on white paper, we were talking last week about, you know, how you, you go into it, looking at value shapes like we normally do, you know, doing a light drawing and getting, uh, you know, your general uh, image down. But we're going to do something a little different this week. We're actually going to do something that sort of bridges its, its way into the toned paper approach, because we're going to start off with just making a mess of charcoal in the background as kind of making a gray, what's called a ground. Um, basically just means a background uh, for your drawing. And then we're going to be erasing out of it, adding more charcoal back in and just sort of, you know, playing around a bit to see what happens. This is a way to, uh, you know, to, the business of putting down a ground in the background sort of, you know, it kills that white to start off with, gives you something to start working with in terms of shape. But when it comes to working with charcoal, it can also set you up from the very beginning with challenges because it can be difficult to erase that first layer. So one of the things you'll be experimenting with today as we put down a ground is you will probably find out how much charcoal you should or shouldn't put down in the future when you're doing that sort of technique. I will say that if I'm working large, I often, rather than using a pencil, I'll often use maybe a chunk of, of charcoal or something like that to do this really quickly. And I'll use a soft brush because I'm trying not to push the charcoal into the ridges. But today, 
we're just going to use the pencils that we have. We're gonna use soft pencil to establish that background and then we'll work from there. And then everything else is kind of the same as what we've been doing before, you know, getting in the darks, you know, assessing what's going on, coming back for the details, erasing where we need to. But the, the eraser is going to be more of an important tool this time than it has been previously. So I wanted to show you an artist who works this way quite frequently, both in graphite and charcoal, and really does manage to do this business of abstracting uh, what he sees, even though there's a ton of detail there, and being extremely free. So we're going to sort of channel Paul Fowler today. He's a British artist, and he does a lot of landscape painting as well as drawing. But this business of, you know, kind of almost barely recognizable, but we know it's a landscape. Um, I love these. And of course, you probably realize why I like them so much because of the, the contrast, you know, the, the really good balance between light and dark. But it's also, you can kind of see his process here. He has a bunch of layers. He's done a lot of erasing um, in some of these layers. So here's a bit more where you can see, you know, different types of strokes, some pencil, some charcoal, um, lots of erasing, some things that are left completely open, others that are made quite dark. Uh, and just a, a sense of freedom. Absolutely, the scene that he was looking at was going to have been a lot more detailed um, than, than what he kind of left us with. But it's getting down to that idea of design. And sometimes when you take that first pass on a drawing, like you, like you will today, you'll put too much in. That's certainly what happened to me. You know, I, was, I wasn't quite sure where to go. So I just sort of tried a lot of stuff all over the place. And I was pretty pleased with the results because even though it's not really a piece of art in and of itself, it's a really good start. It's an indication of where this kind of thing could go if I wanted to try it again. So here's some more of Paul Fowler's art. You can see that he kind of likes to kill that white on the paper as well with some ink going down. And then he's got charcoal, he's mushed it in, he's got thin lines, thick lines, stuff going everywhere. And so Today, I'd like you to feel free to try all of that stuff yourself, even though we're doing a different subject matter, because you won't know how it works until you actually try it. And you might decide some of it you like and some of it you don't as you go along. Here's another one, uh, same type of thing. You can see lots of erasing going in that to get that sort of watery look in the ground, which is kind of neat. And, and once again, you know, lots of interesting, the, the light and the dark areas. Now we've got in the image that we're using today, we've got a lot, lot of light and dark areas. And this is kind of on the right where I ended up, um, you know, working at about, oh, I guess about six by six or seven by seven. I didn't work very large and I worked really fast. This is like 20 minutes worth of work. But this is what I want us to do today is to get to the point where we're, the idea of accumulation is what we're addressing. We're not doing specific drawings of wrenches and tools and that kind of thing. So once again, uh, if, you, if you haven't been uh, here for the other uh, class on charcoal, we're just using basic charcoal pencils of varying different uh, lead softness. Uh, we, uh, uh, if you have a number of different types of erasers, um, there are a number of useful ones, such as a, the uh, white plastic um, type of eraser that's in a block or a kneaded rubber eraser. Uh, sometimes that white plastic, you can get it in kind of a pencil form, which is useful. And then also blending stumps. Those will, those will be useful today as well. If you don't have blending stumps, a soft rag or a, cop, a cotton swab or even your finger will be really useful. And you also might find an, an, a separate piece of paper to rest your hand on when you get to near the end and you're trying to put some details might be useful. Because <laughs> speaking from experience, I, I managed to get charcoal all over the, the side of my hand and then, you know, rub it around a little bit. So how we're getting started today is in general with charcoal, you start off with a plan. You really, it's really helpful. It doesn't matter whether it's a no tan or rough sketch or whatever. Often you sketch very lightly in pencil or charcoal to get your proportions and um, objects in place. With the technique that we're going to be doing today, where we really do a wash in the background, you'll find that if you actually did that and spent your time doing all of your drawing first, that that first layer of charcoal will really cover up your pencil and you won't be able to see it. So what I find is I like to just go right to the business where we start erasing. But I have discovered over time that it can be useful at some point to put some of those initial graphite lines down if I'm trying to do something really large where I'm, I am concerned about how it goes. So this is a sort of thing that you will end up kind of playing by ear. 
um, we'll use blending stump charcoal pencils and erasers to give suggestions of objects rather than really trying to draw them out specifically. Um, once again, the, the final details and the highlights and stuff really go where you want to um, give the most interest because this is kind of a, an overall scene, um, <coughs> excuse me, and I was working small, um, there, aren't, there weren't really specific areas I chose, but I did like, for example, having some of those numbers that I saw on the side of the wrenches. <coughs> Excuse me. I thought that was kind of neat. Once again, we're going to try not to rely overly on blending. Those final bits that we do will be using some hatching and some kind of free drawing marks just to see what goes on. So observation, what needs to be in the scene? Really, uh, to me, maybe three or four of the largest tools were all I really felt I needed to have um, even somewhat recognizable. The rest of it could just be suggestions of stuff. We don't actually always have to put, you know, specifically what we're, what we're going to do, lay out the detail. Uh, years ago when I worked in screen print, we often had to do um, pictures of battleships for, for t-shirts. I was in, in an area with a large Navy base. Um, and of course we weren't given the specific pictures of, of the, uh, the ships. We'd get these little embroidered patches or something, and we had to make a big t-shirt design. So we got really good at kind of, you know, faking it in, faking in what, you know, what looked like a superstructure for a particular ship. Um, that's the same kind of thing that's going to happen with a drawer like this. You don't know what these objects are. It doesn't matter. Round forms, square forms, you know, some things going behind others, some forms going on top. As long as you've got a couple of objects that are relatively recognizable, um, you know, you'll get the idea of the scene across. Also, I would say noting the lighting direction is useful because what we're going to do today will re rely a little bit on those darks and lights. We can see that the light must be coming in from the left. It's casting a bit of shadow um, from the side of whatever this box is. And also you can see a little bit of a shadow to the left of a lot of the objects. And those will be interesting design elements. So to start off with, let's just take a few minutes like we normally do and do a no tan. In this particular case, I didn't necessarily make a rectangle because I wasn't quite sure. Well, I knew that the edges of this drawing were going to be very free form. Um, and I just looked for, well, what would those light and dark patterns be? And I found it really challenging to begin with. Um, I, you know, it took me a few minutes to get the angles of the tools, even approximating what they should be and likewise the, the relative shape. So I ended up doing this more as one of my, you know, sketches slash notans, where I drew out the objects first and then added in the darks. So when, when you're approaching something that is free form, until you really feel comfortable with, uh, you know, identifying the parts of the drawing that you want to actually work on, it's really useful to do this preliminary work. You know, you know, I'm always stressing this, but you can really see how without some idea of, of what was going to possibly have some detail and what was most likely not, it would be very easy to be sucked into drawing lots of these objects and losing any sense of the overall light and dark design. And that is why, you know, I, I continue to, to say, even if you do just the roughest uh, little sketch, and, and just have a look at where, where are those darks existing? And then the second question you can, you know, sort of ask yourself while you're doing something like this, and you can definitely see that I did it, was, you know, can some areas just all be dark? Or can those areas, can some areas just all be light? Um, do I ha actually have to define, you know, every edge of every little thing I see there. And also what kinds of shapes might actually be useful to accentuate and what, what might not. Now I know of course that by the time I get to the drawing, I'll be changing my mind and, and doing different things. But this is just that first pass, that first look to see what's going on. I think that this is also a really good image to work with because there is, I'm sure for every single one of you, your mind is already worried about is my wrench looking good? <laughs> Do I have this wrench right? Because these are objects that we see a lot, but almost never draw. And they're kind of unusual. You know, there's a little bit of a tilt to the top of that wrench head. You know, there's, uh, you know, the, the, the length of the, of the wrench. Sometimes if you've got two heads on it, uh, one's kind of going one way and one's sort of going the other. These are shapes that we're just not we're familiar with seeing, but we're not familiar with drawing. And so I just want to say right now, 
don't worry if your wrench doesn't look like a wrench. You know, if you've got a circular thing on one end and a long rectangle and something circular on the other end, it'll be fine for what we're up to today. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and move into the first step. So to begin with, what I'd like you to do in an area on your paper that's not too large, and I've got a pretty textured paper I'm using right here, um, you know, so you can kind of see, you can sort of see the charcoal on, on the texture. Um, what I did was I just very lightly sketched using a 6B charcoal pencil, anything that softish will work. If you don't have a softer pencil on hand, don't worry, just sort of, you know, keep it light. But what I'm doing here is I'm not necessarily, I'm not thinking of this as drawing. What I'm doing is I am depositing a layer of charcoal that I know I am then going to blend. So that's, so that's why I don't mind that if, it, if it's going different directions, the whole idea at this particular stage is you're gonna create some interest underneath by having some kind of texture, some sort of ground as it's called, and it's same word that's used in painting, you know, that, that very initial layer you put down that, that's going to, that you're going to draw or paint on top of. Um, I want it to have a little bit of life, even though I'm going to blend it in, I want, I want there to be something going on under there. So once you've got that bit done, you'll blend it. And so it'll look something like this because a lot of that charcoal will not budge. Some of it will, and that's the stuff that kind of makes this, this gray texture. Uh, that's going on there. So just go ahead and I used a soft rag, you can use whatever you want, but you can really see right now where if I had taken the time up front to draw out, you know, in, in detail my scene, and then I did this, I would have completely obliterated any lines underneath. So sometimes if you are going to do a, a more careful, or you want to start your drawing more carefully, I should say, um, you can at this point stop with your hand on some tracing paper or something like that, you know, draw out your scene. The problem is that you really can't erase at this point because this gray kind of, you know, this lovely gray finish you've put down, you'll be making marks in it. So what I do is if I am going to draw something more carefully to start with, I will do it in pencil. Um, I, and I will not worry if I'm leaving lines unerased, if they're the wrong lines. If I need to put another line in, I'll just draw it. Because almost certainly it'll get covered up with more charcoal later. And it's less of a problem to have extra lines in the wrong place than it is to try to erase at this stage and then get that finished uh, look back again. So that's just uh, you know, been there, done that, word to the wise. Okay, so now we get started on the part from here on out. This is where the frustrations are going to start. So just, just, you know, take a mental deep breath. It's going to be okay. We're just going to move through this. So we're going to start using the eraser as the tool first. And the very first thing to do is without drawing any lines to give you any sort of direction whatsoever, just erase out some of what you see as the brightest areas. Don't worry if it doesn't erase completely. I used two different types of erasers. I, I went first with my kneaded rubber eraser and uh, I realized it didn't really pick up as much of the charcoal as I wanted. And it kind of was soft around the edges. So I decided to come in with a harder eraser and try that. I still couldn't pick up all the charcoal I had put down. Now I am working on white paper. Um, this is just the photography makes it look a little bit dark around the edges, but it, it is actually uh, white on white. But in this case, all I'm worrying about is getting those first big initial shapes. Um, and I looked around and said, do I want anything else uh, white at this point or lighter? No, I don't. I can always pick out some more highlights later. So it doesn't have to be, you know, the be all and end all. I know that this part is frustrating when you are not exactly sure of the angle you should be drawing and perhaps the angle that you've erased at is not the right angle or the shape of the head of the wrench is not at all like the drawing that you just did a few minutes ago. But this is one of the reasons why I feel it's even more important to do that upfront notan or that upfront sketch because at least it was that first pass for you to get the relative idea. So you're probably somewhere in the ballpark but not exactly where you want to be at this point. Okay, so let's move on to the, to the next step. We'll spend a little bit more time on these ones coming up, don't worry. Okay, so now, now we get back to, to more familiar ground. <laughs> we've done some erasing, we've got our, our kind of lively background in there. 
Now it's time to spend a little time and actually start looking around for those darks. Um, those darks we identified in the no tan. But what, what I'd suggest doing is not filling up the dark areas the way the notan was, but just sort of look for various points where you see it darkest. Now, to give you kind of a heads up, you will be doing or you will be erasing out of some of these areas in the future. So for example, say you see a screw or one of these little round white things and you know that you would like to, you know, make it make that a little feature in your drawing at some point. Don't worry about um, drawing it specifically right now. What we're trying to do at this point is we're trying to remember that the goal, the goal of this drawing is not a forensic examination of wrenches. <laughs> this is not a crime scene. <laughs> or Although some people in Neat Nick might think this was a crime scene. But, um, but we're really trying to just keep the word accumulation at the top of our minds. That's the, that's the concept we're following, accumulation. And so clutter, you know, objects, things that we don't really remember what they're for. <laughs> All of that is part of an accumulation. Um, and I think that's why it's really important to, to try to hold back on drawing specific objects. And it's one of the reasons I'm, I'm moving you quickly today through this, just to get away from the things I often talk about, which is making sure all the angles are right and looking at the lights and darks and the form and this, that, and the other. There will be time to play some of that in, but right now it's just about the dark areas. Okay, so I'm going to, to move on to the second kind of part of this, of this step, which is now making more of a mess. So I started blending. I used a blending stump at this point. Blending some things where I go, okay, I've made those light areas of the, of the wrenches and such, but I, you know, I don't actually want the entire wrench the same value. It actually gets, in my view, a little bit like I'm talking about the wrench now at the bottom. It gets a little bit darker on the right-hand side. So I want to actually use the blending stump to get a little bit further over there. So at this point, I am still not worrying about making a mess. I, I'm still not worrying about, is this an exact drawing? Of, of what I see here. Um, because one of the beauties of charcoal is that you always do have opportunities to go in later and become more detailed. You don't have to actually start off that way. But it is, it's nice to be able to um, lay down these larger, looser, kind of wild areas first, something that's a lot more difficult to do when you're actually working with pencil. Um, you know, that becomes a little bit, you can do it, uh, but to get the, those darks down so quickly, to be able to make this kind of like, you know, really sort of messy thing um, really quickly, uh, and not so easy to do in pencil. Very easy to not only do that in charcoal, but to go overboard on the darks. And I think that's why practice, practice doing this is really important. So one of the reasons I was really keen on having you use this particular subject matter and, and do this kind of messy approach just to kind of get your feet wet is because this is where we start to transition from drawing things to, to creating art. Not that, <laughs> not that my sketch is art by any means whatsoever. But what I mean is that you're starting now to put more of your own interpretation in here, what you think is important, what you're what your pencil strokes look like versus my pencil strokes. You see here that I added a whole bunch of, you know, stuff around the edges. Uh, you know, your, your stuff around the edges might look completely different. You know, your, the, the pencil you pick, the way that you move that pencil, all of that is far more individual because we're not trying to reproduce this, this photo anymore. We are, we are trying to express something using this photo as, as a basis. And so, if you were to draw this scene in this loose manner over and over again, you know, I don't mean in a row, but like maybe over the course of a year, you, you went at it again. Out of that, say, five or six different drawings that you did, one or two of them would be really good. You know, there would, have, there would be something about those that you say, gosh, I really, I really nailed it right there. Um, and that is what happens to so someone like Paul Fowler. We look at his uh, sketches and we're like, ooh, that looks really great. How did he do that? Well, he did it by doing hundreds of other sketches like that. And then some of them just rose above the level of being 
hey, kind of a neat sketch, or maybe it hit, didn't really work at all, to being actual art. By you know, it just hit somehow that balance of of the lights and the darks and the composition and the suggestion of a scene that created art. To get there, you have to do a lot of this. And so, you know, uh, it's been kind of funny when I've been doing these sketches for the class because I've been going, gosh, you know, I should be doing these perfect sketches so you can see like this like amazing result or whatever. And I'm like, no, no, no. You have to see what 20 minutes of me, you know, doing this looks like because you're going to be doing 20 minutes of it. And it, I don't want to set up false expectations, but I do want to show this is really approachable and it can be done over and over again uh, until the, you start to refine how you would like to do it. So let me move on here. So now talking about refining, now I'm starting to get back into more of my comfort zone, which is adding in more drawing. Um, using I'm now using a harder charcoal uh, lead. So I'm probably using like a HB or an H, something that's more, way more comfortable for me. I, I like to work in graphite. I like the control of that. I'm um, less comfortable, you know, with working with super loose, very soft charcoal to draw. So what I decided to do was I'm, I'm adding in some, some, a little bit more line. I'm doing, you know, I'm going around the edges of objects that I feel I want to isolate. I'm trying to, you know, make the messiness look messier in a way. I'm also doing some hatching that I'm not going to blend out, that I'm just going to leave like that sitting on top, because I think that that adds a good deal of variety. Once again, you know, with this drawing, with charcoal in general, I don't necessarily know where I am going. Um, you know, it's, it's much more experimental. I think when I start on a graphite drawing, I probably have a clearer sense of what it's going to look like as, as a finished uh, piece. Um, or even if I'm doing a more careful uh, charcoal drawing, it's the same sort of thing. I, I do have an idea where I'm going. For something like this, I don't. I don't actually know all the time what's going to happen. Um, I find that when I use a, the blending stump, for example, it's often darker than I had intended. <laughs> or, um, or when I go, if, if that does happen and I go back with the eraser trying to, to lift out my highlights again, I can't get them back. Um, and then I have to decide, well, I can make an area of a drawing look lighter by making the uh, neighboring area look darker. Is that possibly a solution, you know, to kind of get that same punch back? But in general, it, with this, as I was moving through it, what I was really keeping top of mind was the word accumulation, you know, and, and concentrating on that feeling of all of this stuff with maybe a few recognizable objects. Otherwise, if we didn't have anything yet, um, recognizable, that would be fine. It would be very abstract, but it might not be as interesting to look at. I think I personally like abstraction that often has, not always, but often has a tiny little toe ho hold in uh, something recognizable. It uh, doesn't always have to be like that. And, it can, and that, um, that recognizable aspect can really vary from being very recognizable to hardly recognizable. Um, if the design and the whole thing overall seems to have some interest, that that's really great. So when I was working at this, at this point, I'm starting to feel, okay, you know, it's starting to come back to me, to being something slightly recognizable, but it's getting really dark. How do I fix that? Well, the, here we come with the erasers again. So moving on to the next stage. So what I did at this point, and this to me was a lot of fun. I, um, I erased out a bunch of stuff and I just decided to add some random erased lines here and there for movement. Um, they don't mean anything. Uh, they don't represent anything. But because I wanted, uh, you know, just sort of this kind of mass of stuff and it for it not just to be sitting there, but to have a little action, I decided to throw some lines in just to see what happened. And this is where, um, you know, doing these small drawings is great because if you decided to do something a little bit larger with the same idea, you might be like, hey, you know, that idea of the lines really worked and I want to do more or I want to do less or I want to do it, you know, in some other fashion. But just sort of adding in some texture as you go is a, is a way to make it happen. So in some ways, charcoal is, is like painting in that you can add in various different sort of 
you know, elements and layers as you go. And then you can go back on top of that and obscure them. You can blend them out. You can add more charcoal on, the, on top, that kind of thing. It's not like you can't do that in pencil, but I just think um, it, it's fast and effective uh, to do it in charcoal. And now I'm going to move us on to the, I think, what is the last stage? Because then we've got a couple of exercises to do. I know we're going fast. <laughs> All right, so this, this was for me the final stage. I, I, I decided, okay, at this point, um, you know, add some more charcoal back in in the darkest darks. Uh, let it sit there. Don't blend it all out. But I went into the edges of it and, and blend it out a little bit more. Um, I used a bit more erasing to pick out shapes. I added uh, a little bit more with the harder charcoal leads to, you know, it, it's unfortunately my my... Inclination is always to head a little bit towards the representational. So I just couldn't help myself trying to define some of these objects a little bit more. Um, and I liked the fact that this went, even as rough of a, a drawing as it is, it went from completely don't know what's going on all the way to that number 24 on that one wrench. You know, that we have this, we, not only do we have a range of values from the lightest to darkest, but we have a range of um, abstraction or obscuring or whatever you might want to call it uh, um, from, from very detailed to, to really um, impossible to tell what's going on. But I did feel that feeling of accumulation of just a pile of stuff that had accumulated over time to the point that we had no idea what was on the lower levels that I had managed that in, in this, you know, 20 minute little drawing. So I'll just give you a few minutes here. I'm going to drink a, a sip of Coffee. I know you're probably going, ah, I didn't even get my wrenches the way I wanted to and what's going on around the edges. But I hope that you're starting to see, you know, for example, how to deal with the edges of something that's free form. That kind of develops over the course of the drawing. But getting that really rough layer down first is an excellent way just to establish kind of a basis for the design. And then as you add more layers on, you're sort of cre you sort of create balance as you go balance and texture, different lines, erasing, hatching, blending, adding in more darks, picking out more lights, until you've got something that has some vibrancy to it, even if it isn't a careful drawing in any sort of way. All right, we'll just stay here at this stage for a few minutes. And what we're going to do next, these next two exercises, which will take the rest of the class, um, are going to be very, very different from what we've done um, before. And uh, or may, we might have done something similar to, to this last summer. So don't, you know, don't freak out. <laughs> um, but I'm doing it on purpose because I feel that this is all part and parcel of the idea of how do we move away from our photo reference, um, but still use it to good effect. Uh, how, do we, how do we get more out of our drawing media so that we can start creating stuff that's more art rather than just, you know, copying photos. And it takes a while, you know, it takes a while and, and every iteration is not going to work out. But if, the more you do it, the more you'll end up with some really super work. All right, let's go ahead and wrap this up and we're going to move on to the, the first exercise. I'll give you a little time to, to do these as we go. Oops. Okay, so the very first exercise, and we'll spend about 10 minutes on this, is using your imagination and intention. Your intention being, you know, we're kind of, the goal is accumulation, as well as your own drawing that you just did. For reference, I'd like you to go through this entire process again, but just really quickly. The idea is that to get less caught up in the details, basically. So what you're going to do is I, I've just made a very grade version of this reference, just so you have it in terms of looking at angles and things like that, but no further than that. And I'd like you to rely more on your imagination of what's going on and the drawing that you just did. Start once again, you can do, um, you can do a few quick lines to establish your layout if you want to. Um, you'll, they'll end up getting obscured when you put the charcoal ground down. So don't go too far. But if you feel like you just need a couple of lines to get you started, go ahead and do that. Or you can skip right to putting a little, you know, draw a little charcoal with your 6B. Go ahead and put that down. 
you know, establish that ground. And then without looking too hard at this photo, which is why I've kind of graded out, think about what you just drew and look at the sketch that you just drew for the major lines of the design and the, the few features that are actually needed to make these objects recognizable. So that might be the, the kind of the, the roundish head at one end, the circular thing at the other end. And then this whole idea about accumulation. Now you can't see very well the objects that we were looking at before. And in your own sketch, even less so, because I didn't give you time to draw them, <laughs> which was awful of me. I totally understand. But I'm more interested in you pushing this towards, you know, the design aspect. Like what is an interesting pattern of lights and darks and, and, and shapes that might imply uh, accumulation while still having maybe one or two objects that you actually could say are based in reality. So, you know, once again, you'll be doing the erasing, you'll, you'll come back in and draw a bunch of stuff. What I'm hoping is that this version ends up being a little bit more simple than the one that you did before. You know, that perhaps the, there's a little, you, you have a little bit more of an idea how much charcoal to put down or not put down. Now, some people um, will do like a, a, you know, some quick lines, maybe for those wrenches and put their charcoal down in such a way that you're kind of almost going around the wrenches and then do your blending. And I didn't show you that way up front because it's a little careful. It's, it, you know, and I think it's fine to do that. Um, I certainly, you know, especially if you want those wrenches to stay kind of light, but I had wanted you to start off with this idea of not having, not, not having that basis of a good drawing and just having to go in with the business of erasing first to get those highlights. So we'll work on this for about another, oh gosh, I guess five or six minutes now. Well, maybe a little bit longer, about about uh, seven minutes now. And I know that this is, you know, this this is not an easy thing to do in any sense whatsoever. And particularly if you're still at the point of feeling that um, you're just getting a handle on drawing objects. And now I'm, you know, telling you to just sort of forget about the objects and just look at the general shape. But this idea, you know, we talked before about how strong design is so important to a good drawing. And then this idea of, you know, creating form, uh, how, how does that happen? And then also the idea of narrative, of story. So creating form doesn't have to mean that you're drawing realistic objects all the time. Sometimes depth creates form. So when we're using charcoal in a method like this, where we're picking out lights and darks, and we're, we're going for that kind of that punch of the lights and darks, as well as the difference between highly detailed objects and objects we can barely know what's going on. That is also another way to create form. It's a different approach, but it, it gives a drawing a lot of life. Um, and then of course, we've got our story, which is accumulation. So that part is easy. The design is kind of given to us already with this photo, which has a lot of design in it. So then it's up to us to figure out how that middle part works. Um, and I like to add stuff in that really has nothing to do with this, you know, hatching where there isn't an object that needs hatching or, or that business of, you know, erasing out. Don't forget to do some, you know, some wild lines maybe uh, in whatever form that you wanted to see how that goes. If you go too far, you can cover it up with some blending or just not worry about it and keep on drawing. But I think, uh, you know, um, as, I, as I've said before, I'm really keen on you using your imagination um, as much as possible. Sometimes imagination is used to fill in things that we can't see or that we want to, uh, you know, imply to someone. For example, say we wanted to actually imply that there were a whole bunch of nails under here somewhere, but there are actually no nails in this, but we wanted to show random nails all over the place. We could use our imagination and what we knew from memory to draw shapes that were nail-like to give that kind of pattern. So we don't have to rely on exactly what we see. We could have made this entire drawing about an accumulation of wrenches and nails, uh, something very different, because 
once you get the general idea of what an accumulation might look like and how you can be pretty vague about it, but you know the lighting direction, you can start to, to bring in objects that don't even belong and add them in here without necessarily having to have a photo. Sometimes it's nice to have a photo of you know, how nails look or how, how a pile of nails look for you to get the idea of you know, where your eraser marks might go to emulate nails. Um, but I think you understand the point I'm trying to make about that. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, I'll give you just a few more minutes. Right. I, I want to make sure that we get a good amount of time for the last exercise as well. I do find when I'm doing um, artwork like this that I, I get stuck with charcoal on the business of how dark it makes everything so quickly. I really do find that that is a challenge. Um, and I don't like overblending, as you know. So that then means an awful lot of charcoal down. And I don't know if you guys are, are uh, experiencing this. It's definitely something that this would be a good time for me to tell you about. But when I got to the part of, I wasn't at the end yet of putting in the darkest darks, but I was somewhere in the middle and I was trying to add more dark charcoal. And I did some erasing as well. And so now I've got charcoal and erasing bits on my page. And I tried to do first what I would normally do with, uh, with pencil, which is use a brush or something. And of course, you can imagine what happened. <laughs> it all just sort of, you know, went together. I just decided to deal with it and keep going on. I got smarter later in the drawing. And when I got to the part where uh, I was picking out highlights just before the end, putting in the darkest parts, I realized maybe I should just turn my paper upside down and kind of hit it on the back and get those little crumbs off that way, uh, with, which did not disturb the charcoal I had put down. And so, you know, that is, that's one way to do it. I could obviously do that with a small piece of paper. For a larger piece of paper, I might need something different. Um, I think these are the kinds of problems that we run into when we're doing a drawing that are so much more than just, you know, where to put the shading uh, and what angle to draw something at. The technical aspect of working with a more, um, I won't say uncontrollable, but it has a, charcoal has a mind of its own. And it takes a while, I think, to get it to be your friend and to work with you rather than you sort of fighting it. Um, and, and these little exercises where it doesn't matter at all, if you end up with something representational, I think is a very good opportunity to get to know you know, to get more friendly with charcoal and, and see what it really can do. And then when you go back to working with graphite, what you'll find out is that you'll wish it did some stuff that you just saw charcoal do, like you getting those dark darks, you know, it, or, or being able to blend really quickly um, something in the background. And, and that's the, the good stuff, the good part of actually working with charcoal. But I do almost consider charcoal like a paint. And I have definitely, as I mentioned before, seen artists work with charcoal using a brush to do the smoothing. And, and if you want to try that, you know, feel free to go ahead and do so. Okay, so we're going to move on to the next exercise now. So just bring this to an end wherever you are and let's move on. You're really going to hate me for this next one. <laughs> okay, so this last exercise is going to be completely using your memory and imagination. So the goal, once again, is that drawing of accumulation from your memory and from your own drawings that you've just done, do that same process again. Um, you can start with quick lines to establish your layout, add the charcoal ground and a little drawing, do some erasing, whichever order that you feel you would like to try. Like you don't, you can start like I did, which is I like to go in and pick out those highlights as soon as I've got that ground blended. You might decide you'd like to try something different and see what happens. But I've got Paul Fowler's artwork over here on the left-hand side. Because, you know, there's nothing, I think, more stressful than what I'm making you do right now. <laughs> you know, <laughs> we're halfway through the class and, and you know, the, the classes for the summer. And I'm, I'm hitting you with something that's pretty, uh, pretty advanced. Um, this is not 
stuff that most beginner people or even intermediate people often end up doing. But the benefit to it is that you will be simplifying your drawing. And if you look over here at what Paul Fowler's done, that is really simplified. You know, these scenes he was looking at had tons of grass, had tons of you know, water, stuff going on in the sky. But because he's choosing this particular you know, method, this sort of approach, he's not putting all of that stuff in. And what happens when you do more drawing from your me memory and imagination, using your own drawings as the basis and whatever you can remember about that image that you just saw, um, what will happen is you'll start to just leave out the stuff that really doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter if it's in there or not. Or if you can't quite remember what it, something looked like, but you feel that something should be happening in that corner, you can use your eraser or your pencils or whatever to make marks that emulate the type of thing you want. So whether it was round objects or screws or nails or just some sort of circular or square or rectangle object, you can just do that. You can just add it in there and see what it looks like um, with the idea that you're, the, the goal is this idea of accumulation. You know you've got two or three objects that you probably want to have as the primary objects in your drawing uh, regardless. Um, they may be wrench-like shapes, or you might have completely abandoned that in protest at this point. Um, and you might have gone completely to the abstract. You could, you, maybe you've just got these large whitish light shapes going in certain directions that work and a lot of other dark things going on, um, you know, behind. Uh, you know, don't forget, you know, some free erasing over the top if you just feel like the whole thing needs a bit more action. Um, but, but this is, as I said, you know, these... As difficult as these exercises are, and I absolutely know that they are, this is the stuff that moves you from drawing objects to creating art. And if you just do a little of this every now and again, along with the things that you find more comfortable, um, you'll find that you're adding in to your more perhaps representational drawings a little of this stuff. You're, you're finding it you know, maybe you're going to draw a person's head or you're going to draw a vase of flowers or you're going to draw a landscape. And you decide, you know what? Even though I want it kind of realistic, I'm going to do that thing in the background where I, I lay down a ground of charcoal. And then maybe I'm going to erase some shapes out of it before I even get started so that there's a feeling of movement to the sky or of the light coming in from a particular direction um, or an, you know, an aura around somebody's head or something like that. And then you carry on with your drawing as you normally would. It kind of gives you a, an idea of how to do a drawing, for example, where, the, where it isn't in a, a square or a rectangle and, and where you want the background just to sort of do its own thing. And I'd like you to keep an eye out as you look at other people's art to how they did that. Because I'm sure at this point, you're starting to look at other people's art and really kind of go, huh, okay, I see that this was done in a number of layers and um, the eraser was used and some pencil and probably needed charcoal to get those darks because you can't really get that from pencil. Uh, and, and maybe even a little a bit of an idea that, um, you know, maybe this person has, does, works like this a lot. So they've done a lot of drawings. Some of them are probably better than others. These are the better ones that I'm seeing here in this gallery. Uh, and that's what happens after you spend, you know, a certain amount of time um, practice, practicing this sort of thing. Also, if you, at this point, if, you're, if your drawing has really gone off the rails and you want to do another little one, you know, maybe even no tan side or, sized or something like that, just to sort of, you know, give this a try. I re really felt today that the idea of repetition was more important than um, saying, you know, erase like me, draw like me, you know, blend like me. I think really what's more helpful uh, it's with something like this is to just sort of dive in, try it a bunch of times, kind of see, you know, okay, you've learned a few things, I'm sure, you know, through this iteration. And you'll be really glad to know that next week we get back to tone paper. And, and something that we're a bit more familiar with. So while you're finishing this up, I'll just talk a bit about, about next week.
continuing with the theme, but we're going to be going back to the, uh, you know, to using tone paper with the, with, you know, the white charcoal and our regular pencils, but we're also going to add a little bit of charcoal in, probably just with like an HB or an H uh, charcoal pencil or something like that, because we don't want to overwhelm the graphite. But I want to bring in a little charcoal to get those darkest darks, so that even if you're working on tone paper, you know, sometimes you've probably found on tone paper that it is difficult you've already got, especially on gray paper, you've already got gray of, of, a, of a relative darkness. And now you've got to keep working darker and darker. Sometimes it's really hard to get like a, a really deep dark. And so that's what we're going to be trying, figuring out where the best place is to add that charcoal in. But, get, but going back and trying, you know, with our beveled pencils and the white charcoal and the, the academic, you know, point and all of those things we've used before, but now we're bringing charcoal in as well. So my goal for you, you know, for this summer is to be able to have you combine kind of like Paul Fowler right here. We, we, we know he's combining stuff here um, to have you combine all of these techniques and drawing media, um, you know, to make it something interesting uh, based on your own experiments, based on your own ideas as you go along. OK, wrap up whatever it is that you're working on right now and we'll, we'll go ahead and, and finish up. You guys are probably like, thank you. Goodness, that's over. <laughs> I, I promise I'll, I'll make it much more simple and low key next week. But I, you know how much I really believe that memory and imagination is key to doing really good art. Um, and it's so good just to start training yourself in that general direction. All right, I'm going to move on to the, to the, I think it's the last slide. Oh, no, it's almost the last slide. So just to sort of, you know, review what we did here. Um, we looked at this photo where one could very easily go extremely detailed and draw it out. And actually, it would be very cool. Uh, I mean, I think it would be neat. But I liked the idea of kind of getting Paul Fowler-esque on it <laughs> and going in a different direction. Now, we relied a lot on sort of like heavy, chunky areas of charcoal for this. This is not a large drawing. Uh, if we were doing something larger, it would be easier to get sort of more of that individual hatching stroke and such, uh, such as we see Paul Fowler using here. But I think this idea of getting a feeling of accumulation of a junk drawer, whatever it happens to be, figuring out how, how does the eraser work in here? How is it at not just a something for erasing lines that we've made by mistake, but it's actually a tool as important as actually drawing with the charcoal and, and moving through that entire uh, iteration. Also this idea of basically creating toned paper for yourself. Often when I go and do uh, figure drawing, I will start off like this. I'll just to get myself, you know, drawing and get my hand moving. I'll actually make a tone on the background while I'm looking at the model just to sort of be doing something. And then that kind of gives me a starting point. So, all right, to wrap up, telling your own story, of course, for the concept as we have been doing. This is though, the, today's subject was such a good example of how the drawing concentrates on the concept and rather than the objects. So a lot of what we have been drawing up until now, the objects have been, you know, quite an important part of what we were trying to say. This week, it was really about using the medium and the, the technique to actually bolster the idea of accumulation. Um, so what needs to go into a drawing, of course, uh, you know, it, it's really good to look at, at your reference up front or look at your still life or, or whatever it is, look at the scenery around you before you start drawing and figure out, you know, what is needed, needed to tell the story, needed from a design point of view, needed for contrast, needed because you, you just think it's interesting and it ought to go in there. Those are all your decisions. Um, but a little abstraction can be useful if you need texture, if you, are, if you just want to suggest something rather than saying it really literally. And of course, don't skip the preliminaries, you know, no tans or sketches or whatever you want to do. You know, can you imagine diving into that drawing without even having tried up front a little sketch? Uh, you know, it would be easy to kind of lose your way um, as you went through it. So checking back at the end to that original idea as you come to the finish, I think is important. So when I was doing my drawing, even though it was fast, it was 20 minutes, I had my little notan sort of propped up beside me. And I kept looking back at that going, you know, was it the notan right? 
in the direction that it's going? Or actually, is my drawing better the way I decided to do it? So the no 10 isn't something or the original sketch. You don't have to cling to it like, you know, like it's the, uh, the be all and end all. It's, it's a guide. It's a way in. Um, and it can save a drawing if you've gone really off course and you have too many midtones and you're trying to get your contrast back. But also what you've done in your drawing, especially in this kind of technique, could have been much better. So, you know, it's just there as the reference. So about the technique, charcoal can be used for detailed drawings. It can be used for abstraction. It can be for painting with the charcoal dust itself using a brush or smudging tools or whatever. Um, and it works well with graphite, but I think you'll find as you go along that sometimes it can be difficult. And this is why I want to work with it next week pulling just a little charcoal into what's basically a graphite drawing because the reflective nature of graphite versus the deep darks of charcoal sometimes play together well and sometimes do not. Um, it kind of depends how you're using it and how much of what. So that's something that we'll look a little bit more at next week. The eraser is such a valuable tool. I, you know, I've, I say it over and over again, just because I really want to hit this home. It's, um, it's as valuable to me as the pencils and the charcoal. So over time, as you, as you see, you know, different products available, different erasers available, you might, they're relatively cheap. You might want to pick up a few different types and try them in your drawings. Some of them will do different things, allow you sharp lines, you know, uh, uh, kind of rough lines. Some will take up a lot of um, charcoal or, or graphite. Some won't, uh, you know, all sorts of things. Some you can cut into shapes that you want if you want to have a specific type of maybe white hatching in your charcoal drawing, you know, whatever you need. These are tools for you to use. I think we let charcoal and sometimes our pencils and definitely paint and uh, all of that control us. And we sort of work within the confines of what we think the material is letting us do. And I think it's important to know that we can bevel our pencils. We can change the shape of the end of the charcoal. We can cut up our erasers and make them any shape we need. These are tools for us to use and we are in charge. <laughs> so a light layer of charcoal down first gets rid of that intimidating white. It gives you a quick starting point, can be really useful. It can also be a nightmare because it's, it can be hard to get up. So, you know, use judiciously. And then the paper you're using will have an effect on, on the outcome. Um, so while you're also trying different types of, of erasers, try different types of paper. You know, everything from just a piece of copier paper to any, any sort of paper, watercolor paper, anything you have around, uh, and just see what the charcoal does on that and, and what erasing uh, is like on different kinds of paper. You'll end up with your own favorites that might be different from my favorites or anybody else's, you know, who, who's watching today. Um, but we won't find out until, until we try, right? We have to experiment. So papers, erasers, the whole bit. Um, and that, uh, that's basically it for today. I know we went through a ton of stuff, so I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing. Oops. And I can't believe it, but um, <laughs> we ended up uh, exactly at, at the time of 12 o'clock. I, I, I certainly don't script that out. <laughs> but I hope that as, as nerve-wracking and probably frustrating as this, as this class was, that it gives you a little of idea of how to start loosening up your drawings and where to go. And we will come back to this topic again as we go through the summer. But for now, thanks so much for being here in my studio today and for, for joining. Um, I hope you had some fun with it uh, under all the frustration. <laughs> all right, until next time, folks.